Welcome to Men's Style Fashion. Thank you. The initials DG come to mind. And I'm not talking about Dolce Gabbana. <laughs> Who are you and what do you do? I'm uh, David Gandy. Yes. I'm uh, a model for British Rate, but um, I'm on the committee for the British Fashion Council and um, for LCM. David, um, I get a lot of emails say men wanting to become a model. What are some crucial tips that you would guide we, we, them coming into it? You've got obviously you've got to have the right stature and the right height, and um, so you've got to be probably over six foot. Right. Um, Why is that so? It's, I mean, it's, um, you don't have to be, there's some shorter ones, but most of them, I'm 6'3", most models are probably 6'1", 6'2". Yeah. It's just, that, that's, you know, you have to fit kind of sample sizes, and, and, and that's what they are in some right. ways. So, um, uh, yeah, you have to fit some certain criteria if you want to be a model, but, re but really, you know, the modeling's open to, to any face. So, um, it's about uniqueness, it's about classic, it's, uh, yeah, there's, there's so many variations. You have your own style up. I Did do. you style yourself today, Mr. Gandhi? I do style. I style myself every morning. Talk us through it. Why, you know, talk us through it. the modern dandy? Is it the modern gandy? Not the modern, the, the modern, <laughs> the modern gandy. I'm mean, painting that one. I like that one. That, that's, my, that's the brand I'm looking for. Um, right, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's Reese, so it's British High Street. Oh, Quite yeah. nice, British High Street. Someone, someone has to be. And um, it's just to kind of show what you can do. You, know, you don't have to spend, uh, you know, have a lot of money on suiting. And, uh, yeah. Uh, well, well, tailored suits. I mean, it's, it's tailored suits off the British High Street, and it's uh, it's quite summery. It's, it's a little bit a little bit daring with the buttons and the light blue and the wall, yeah. but um, it's summertime, so you've got to go light colours. And uh, but it's still keeping that traditional feel. Um, in regards to charity, it's something incredibly dear to my heart. Why is it taking so long for you know high labels or any fashion industry to get involved? Red nose comes to in, ch mind. in charity. Yeah. I asked myself the same question. That's why I set up the Blue Steel Appeal in January. Um, we've just raised. We've got the final numbers in, and through the fashion industry, we raised two hundred and twenty-two thousand pounds right. for the first initiative. So yeah. we kind of show now what we can do in the fashion industry. So many people have stepped up, and the kind like Amy Campbell. Yeah. Um, um, Victoria Beckham, yeah. so many, so many people who did so such a wonderful thing for us, and so we can show what we can do in raising that amount of money. I hope that everyone will get together in the fashion industry within the next few seasons, using LCM, using the, you know, the girls' fashion yeah. week, and raise as much money as we can for a good cause. A few years ago, Elton John did a pop-up shop on One sure, Street. Okay, yeah. He gave everything that he owned in his wardrobe. Would that be something that you would be prepared to do? We, we, I, I, what I tried to actually get together last year was a lot of. Yeah. Um, Slept with a lot of people from fashion is to actually do a whole almost I, I call it kind of a boot sale, yeah. um, but a very posh boot sale, maybe in Harrods, maybe in Selfridges, right. um, and everything that we, we don't know and we don't want anymore and, and, and we want to get rid of. The things that we do have that we're still prepared to donate to charity um, was there everyone has a very, very sort of celebrity boot sale, and, and, and 100 of those proceeds, 100 percent it goes to Blue Steel of So I'd like to get that together for next year. We've now seen what works. Yeah. Um, what I try to do as well is give. It gives, gives people from from the heist, uh, from from every day, from from the street men and women, an opportunity to experience the fashion world as well. Um, so that's. Um, why? What's your sort of encouragement for a man that's lost his passion to dress up a little like You know. I, I think. I mean, I, I, women probably have, have nailed it more than men. But the, the, right. the dressing up makes you feel good. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's very easy, I always think that sort of, with my style app, I always said there's maybe five or ten pieces you have to buy, yeah. which is just staples for your wardrobe. Um, what three crucial um, pieces of clothing a man should own? But if you, I always think if you have a, a good suit, maybe a three-piece suit, yeah. you, you can separate, you, know, you can wear the trousers with something else, you can yeah. wear uh, the jacket, the, the, the waistcoat, so I mean that is, is one, is sort of uh, three items in, in, one, in one sort of, uh, in one look. Um, you're going to separate that. A good pair of shoes, a good pair of shoes makes or breaks an outfit, always. Um, and then go for a good accessory, so a handkerchief or a great tie or a good, a good t-shirt goes a long way. I know that sounds ridiculous, so I went in my, in my style app. I talk about t-shirts and people say to me, there's only one t-shirt. I said, there's not. There's v-neck, there's deep v-neck, there's deep crew, you know, there, there's everything. So get the right t-shirt and, and uh, of course a good tailor to, to, to just nick and tuck and, and take everything in sort of to tailor it to you yeah. if you're going to buy, from, or buy it off the pick. So um, that's very important. So it can be done, you don't, you don't need to spend much money now. Right, I'm glad to hear it. Savile Row. What, is, what does 
this several row mean to you? A lot of our viewers don't know what it's about. And I'm, I'm asking you to speak from the heart now, not if David, you know, gained his model, yep. but you know? Well, I, I kind of think we're here. We're, we're, we're at the you know, men's show yep. because of several row. Right. You know, men's styling is based around tailoring, it's based around tutorials. So, and, and that started 300 years ago in, you know, in, sort of in London, Savile Row, um, and here we are today sort of celebrating it. And, um, and, and so Savile Row is the pinnacle of that. You know, it's, I, mean, I think Tom Ford has been quoted as saying that, that London is uh, the home of menswear. Yeah. And probably the, the home of menswear, I feel, is, is, uh, is kind of certainly Savile Row. Well, where do they go from here? Because Starbucks is in there, and Abercrombie and Fitch. I mean, or Abercrombie, you know. It's, you know where do they go from here? Is it the end of Savile Row? No, it's not, it's not the end of Savile yeah. Row. Savile Row constantly you know, uh, recreates itself, modernises. You know, Richard James changed it with the yeah. giant glass windows. Yeah. Uh, Oswald Boateng's in the now. Yeah. Um, so it, it's constantly changing. Um, yeah. it, 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 I don't think England will ever allow Savile Row, will never ever allow Savile Row to move down. And, you know, and it's getting a boost now of, um, of an investment from China, which, yeah. is, which is great, which is a little bit of a shame. But yeah. if England is willing to, uh, to invest in, in things like Savile Row, and same with the car companies, you know, then, then you need Indian investment, China investment for, for these British traditions to carry on. David, there was one tweet that kept coming at me um, last time I interviewed you. Ladies, if you're wondering if he's handsome, he's traumatically sorry. Oh, Thank you so much. Kind of Thank you.